Hey guys, this is John, and I have a rematch with Narkisos, who I played recently. And looks like we're getting a Grunfeld in this case. So let's play let's play knight f3. And then bishop e2. Um, this is one of the main lines. In this position, I'm going to play. Let me just think which line I want to go into. I'm either gonna play bishop e3 or castles. Just giving it a little thought. I think I'll castle. Yeah, I'll do that. And he'll try to pressure my d-pawn, of course, like knight c6 or bishop g4. I shouldn't say, of course, because he did something totally unrelated. Now I'm going to go bishop g5. I'm going to annoy his e7 pawn. He was queen c7, okay. Let's go... Let's go queen d3. And I'm going to try to put the queen on e3. This is a common idea in this variation. So I'll do it now. Queen here is good because I can maybe play bishop f4. I can also play bishop h6. I can think about that. Okay, I can't go bishop h6 yet because he just... Well, actually I probably can. Bishop h6, he takes on e4. I take with my queen, he takes here. Don't know if I should get involved with that. Let's just go rook f d1 first. Yeah, knight d7, and maybe now e5. Yeah, let's just block, block the center and go e5. Maybe h4 at this point. He can trade and try to infiltrate with his queen, though, is the thing. Like, go queen c3. I like the fact that I played h4, though. I can pester him with h5. I got into time trouble last time against this guy, and it didn't turn out well. So I'll try to play faster with my next series of moves. Yeah, I think he should trade and then bring the queen in to c3. He's probably assessing that continuation right now. But I have nice moves like bishop b5 then, if he does that line. Yep, he does. Maybe bishop b5. Or trade and then bishop b5. Or just a4. How about a4? Yeah, I like a4. Just try to advance a5. Mini minority attack, using my one pawn to attack his two pawns. He can anchor his bishop on d5, that's true. Okay, let's just inflict this pawn weakness on him. Now I think it, there's a very good chance he's going to play bishop d5 coming up. But let's still maneuver this knight. My knight was doing nothing on f3. So time to maneuver it. Let's go here. Just rule out bishop b4. I do want to trade the bishops, so I'll do that. Hmm. If I take with my pawn, I'm worried that this pawn might become vulnerable. So let's take this way. I don't like having to waste time with my, um, let's just block his b-pawn. Don't like wasting time to have to move this knight again, because I'm probably going to go to d2 or g5 once more. Because I'd really like to get it on e4 if I could. But I think this is like the best way to play it. Okay, let's go here. And if he takes, I'll take with my pawn. Hopefully I can win this b6 guy. Okay, now d5 is tempting. d5 or take on f6 and then knight e5. That may just win me a pawn straight out. Yeah, let's do that. And if he goes rook c6, I have knight a5 now. Yeah. I think he was only expecting me to, uh, to take on b6. 
Let's go here. Annoy his king a little bit. Okay. Yeah, he's certainly playing fast now. But I think my position is close to winning. So long as I don't blunder anything. Rook c1 looks safe here. Hmm. I want to get my other rook involved. Yeah, let's just do that. Rook c1 looks easy. He resigned. Okay. Well, if he had traded, I was going to um, obviously take back on c1. And if he goes bishop c3, I could play bishop b2 was my idea. So he just gave it up. I think it is winning at the end, right? Yeah, plus four. I was just Check. mildly concerned that the A pawn and my weak D pawn might be an issue. But it's not the case. This and this. Okay, let's take a look. So the Grunfeld. I played a line I don't think I played on video yet, which is this move, um, knight f3. Very mainline move. And he castled. I actually think playing c5 is slightly more accurate in this position. So castling gives white a few more options. So bishop e2. Um, yeah, bishop e3 is also possible here. Bishop e2, c5, castle. And he played b6. For some reason, I was thinking bishop g4, knight c6 were the main moves. But I could be completely wrong about that. So b6 and bishop g5. Now, the point is, like, he can play h6 if he wants, but then I have a nice choice between bishop h4 and going back to e3. And you might ask, like, why go bishop g5, h6, and then back to e3? Why, why not just play bishop e3 right away? Well, the thing is, like, this move is actually a weakness for black, and I may gain a tempo later with a move like queen d2 and hit h6. Um, actually, I probably would have played bishop h4, but... He didn't play h6, so it was kind of a moot point. And then I went queen d3. So he could play bishop a6 right now and try to swap the light square bishops, like something like this. Might be a more simplistic way of playing the position for him. White tends to have a slight advantage in this type of structure with one extra center pawn, but uh, overall black has a very solid position. I went queen e3. Now, I was wondering about bishop h6, because this is my most direct move. He won't take my bishop, because that would be bad in view of knight g5 coming. He'd have to play something like f6 to stop me from doing that, and that would just be awful. But um, I was actually concerned that if I go bishop takes h6, he might be able to do this. But looking at it now, that's a completely ridiculous concern. I mean, I was worried that this line, now the move knight c6 could be messy because I have to give up my queen for two rooks. But um, actually, I can just take on g7, and if he takes on f3, I can just take back with my bishop hitting the rook. That'll just win me a rook clean, basically. So maybe I should have played bishop h6 in this position. I didn't want to spend more time thinking about it because this guy, you know, he, he built up a nice time advantage in the opening, but looks like I could have done this. Because I would like to get rid of that dark square bishop. That's a valuable defender of his king. And it also puts pressure on my d4 pawn, so. I just did rook f d1. And then e5. h4. I think I made decent use of my rook pawns in this game. So h4, always a useful move. I don't have to worry about any back rank threats. And the prospect of being able to push h5 down the road is nice. So this was kind of a crucial position when he played queen c3. Oh, bishop d3, I didn't consider that move at all. I just kind of thought that, you know, I wasn't going to waste time moving my queen, and I didn't want to take and allow his rook to come in with tempo. But bishop d3, that's a good thing the engine's pointing out, because that would have avoided the queen trade. And maybe then I can focus on playing on the king side. It says something like this, and then pawn takes. That'd be an interesting decision if black were to give up their light square bishop for the knight. But I'm not unhappy with the way it turned out after a4. So maybe this was an okay decision. 
Here it suggests he play f6, so it says he should undermine my center quicker. Yeah, because that e5 pawn was a, a concern for him for throughout the game. It was like just a bone in his throat, this position. What did he do? Like rook c7, now a5. So I'm carrying out this minority attack. I'm trying to get rid of my isolated pawn and inflict an isolated pawn on him. And in fact, it's a pass pawn too. <laughs> um, isolated pawns can be pass pawns as well. It's kind of like looking at the glass half full or half empty. But uh, <laughs> given the amount of pieces that are still on the board, it's not likely that this pawn is going to be um, advanced very quickly. And in fact, I'm able to nail it down to the b6 square pretty rapidly. Now he's, he's struggling. Traded the bishops. I wanted to take with a pawn so I could bring my knight here without delay. But I was worried that this h-pawn could become a liability. It's just undefended sitting there. So I took with the knight kind of begrudgingly. Rook b5 was a nice move before he can play b5 himself. Yeah, and now I'm doing very well. Knight e5. I guess his best move would have been just to let the pawn go. Yeah, like move his rook away somewhere. The engine suggests that. And try to hold this position. It's not fun though. Knight d5, attack my bishop. Yeah, not surprised by this eval. I'm pretty sure he just missed knight a5. I went here. Yeah, and I had this move. Most efficient way to win. I think he was only considering that I was going to take on b6. So, nice fork to win the exchange. Probably should have played rook c1 right now. Yeah. I tried to get fancy. Cajun is king a little bit. It didn't hurt me, but rook c1 immediately would have been more direct, wouldn't it? Okay. So I got revenge on Mr. Narkisos. <laughs> Evened up our lifetime score. Hope you guys enjoyed that game. And I'll be back with a couple more videos today. Thanks, guys.